Hi folks! Well it's cold and wet and horrible outside today so I thought I might spend some time trying to explain how one of these works. Well, I said I'd show you how this works, so I'll show you the simple explanation first of all. You stick it in some solution, and it tells you the electrical conductivity or the EC of it. And then you've got conversion factors if you want it in PPM 500 or PPM 750 scales, which are basically multiply the EC by 500 and you get the PPM 500 scale, or by 700 to get the 700 scale. So. OK, that's the simple explanation of how it works, but what's actually going on inside this thing? Well, if we unscrew the little end protector, you can see that what we've got at the end there is two electrical contacts and a temperature sensor. And uh, the only way this thing knows that it's in solution can be by measuring across those electrical contacts. There's no on-off switch, so it's going to have to be continually sending something across there to see what kind of result it gets. So let's have a look at that now. So if we just have a look at what's going on on the end of this probe here, you can see that we're actually getting a little pulse sent out once a second as it has a check to see what's on the end of the probes and um, makes a quick reading. I'll just get a better shot of that pulse of what's going on with that. Okay, so here's that pulse we were just looking at, that once a second pulse and if we actually look at what's going on here, I've just set up the cursors and the rulers on this so we can take a few quick measurements. And we can see this period here where it's held high from here to here is 2.6 milliseconds. And then after that, it looks like we get dragged down to the zero value. It looks like we've got a capacitor discharging there down to zero. And then we get dragged low for 2.6 milliseconds. And then we get dragged up to zero. And the top value is 4.5 volts, which matches up with our three AA batteries, and we've got a minus 4.5 volts for the negative as well. Now let's have a look what happens when there's actually something on there for it to measure now. Yeah, I've got a bit of slightly damp sponge, which I'm going to hold across the uh, probes like that, and then I can get the oscilloscope probes on there at the same time. I'm going to do it out of shot though, so because the waveform is what you actually need to see. So here we go. With a reading of 0.2 EC, we get a waveform that looks like that. So you can see that although we're still charging up to this 4.5 volt value at the start, this is no longer staying high for 2.6 milliseconds. In fact, this is ramping down straight away until it hits a value of about 2 volts. And then we seem to be getting zeroed off there. And the same thing's happening in the negative. We're getting pulled down to minus 4.5 volts and then we're ramping down until we get to about minus 2 volts and then we get pulled back to ground again. And I suspect what's going on here is a um, capacitor based ADC. So with our EC of 2.0 we're now taking just under a millisecond to drop down to this 2 volt level. Um, 940 microseconds it says there. Um, I suspect that as the EC increases as you get more and more conductive solutions the angle of this slope will go further and further and therefore the amount of time it takes this voltage to drop from the starting four and a half down to this two volt cutoff level will decrease so the more conductive the solution the less time it takes for this voltage to drop off to this cutoff value here. Um, let's see if we can prove that. Try and get some, I'll go and get some salt so I'm just going to make up a very tiny quantity of not particularly strong salt solution. So I've dipped this sponge in salty water now and we're now getting a reading of 0.7 EC off that. So we'll get a look at the waveform we get with that and I'm betting that slope will be a great deal steeper than it was there. So that was 960 microseconds and now well, you can see that slope has dropped a lot more. Um, if I can freeze that. 
So now moving our cursor B. Now it takes us just 340 microseconds to drop down to this 2.2 volt cutoff, 2 volt cutoff. So here's my thought on how this circuit inside this probe might actually be working. Um, just as a for example, they could have a capacitor, which is just a reservoir for storing electricity in, and they could have an electronically controlled switch, and first of all they connect it up to 4.5 volts, and we see that peak up on the oscilloscope. Then they switch that switch over and connect it to the probe instead, and at that point the electricity inside this capacitor will start to discharge through our nutrient solution and that voltage on that capacitor will then drop and if they compare that voltage to a voltage reference chip, some kind of 2 volt reference then at the point when this capacitor has discharged down to the 2 volt level the output signal here will rise up high and then they know they can stop the timer so the amount of time it takes for this slope to go down, for the capacitor to discharge, tells us the conductivity of the solution, because the slower the capacitor discharges, the less conductive the solution is. Now, some of you may be wondering why you can't just... No, let's be honest, none of you are actually wondering this. But um, in my imagination, some of you might be wondering why you can't just measure EC using a normal multimeter and in fact why this signals bouncing backwards and forwards both po positive going and negative going rather than just zero to four and a half volts they're, they've got it going both positive and negative well let's have a look at that so being a curious kind of guy I did the obvious thing and I, of course I googled for EC probe circuit yes, spelt like that see what I'd get and there seemed to be a circuit diagram as the very first link so I clicked on that and it seems to be a circuit diagram for an EC PPM TDS meter so I visited the page and it's actually really cool this is a page by a lady called Isabella who has built her own EC meter and made her own salt calibration solutions um, half a litre of water plus one gram of salt gives you a 2000 ppm solution and she's put together her own EC probe using um, the one she says worked best was gold phono terminals um, sealed up so only a small part of them is exposed but just the gold connection off phono terminals apparently works very well and she's gone to the trouble of building a little circuit as well um, to actually drive these EC probes and built a unit to measure EC and pH at the end of it all but among the things she's done, she's built a simulation for us in a free tool called Molecular Workbench um, where she's made a salt solution and she's put AC and DC fields onto it. So I thought we'd have a quick look at that. So here is Molecular Workbench and if I open up salt water with a DC field and we run this simulation the uh, blue and two greens are the water molecules and then the purple ones with the pluses in are the positively charged sodium ions which have flocked over here to our negative electrode. Um, this is what would happen if you were measuring with a straight multimeter just measuring the resistance of the water and the chlorine ions have flocked towards the positive electrode and our nutrient solution is no longer actually a balanced solution. We've kind of changed the chemical composition of that by doing electrochemistry on it. But if for comparison we open up what happens with an AC current and we'll run that simulation you can see that everything just kind of oscillates about a bit and it doesn't really move towards the electrodes and actually if we change this ever so slightly and we'll um, take the AC frequency down to something really slow there we are so we're run we'll be running at about 2 hertz there you can see that everything wobbles. Actually let's just drop that even further. Drop that right down to one time a second. And there we are. You can see that everything just wobbles from side to side and our solution doesn't actually break up and go to the electrodes. And this, in addition to stopping electrochemistry in the solution, um, stops elements building up on the electrodes and stops corrosion of the electrodes. And if you ran your PC probes 
just using a DC current, it wouldn't be long before you'd have to replace them because of um, build-up of crud on one of the electrodes. So this is the circuit diagram from Belladonna or from uh, Isabella and it comes in basically four stages. It's got an oscillator stage which generates a sine wave signal. Then that sine wave signal is fed out to the EC probe that goes into the nutrient solution and then it comes back into an amplifier stage to amplify that signal which will have shrunk down to be quite small by then. That signal is boosted again and then fed into a diode network to change it into a series of always positive, to remove the negative going component and provide the always positive going component out of there. That's integrated over a capacitor to remove our base frequency and then that's boosted to an output which can go off to feed an analog to digital converter on a microprocessor and the idea is that we can calibrate this so that readings of 0 to 5 volts out of here correspond to readings of 0 to 5 on EC. Um, and I'll just give you a quick look at what I've built so far. So this is the TL074 quad op amp chip and everything else is just little resistors and capacitors. I had to tweak a few component values because I didn't have the uh, exactly the ones that she listed on the schematic. However, I do have a beautiful 1.4 or 1.5 kilohertz sine wave. Um, and it's, it's very, very stable. It's not affected by voltage changes in the power supply or anything like that. So I've now got a bit more of this silk circuit built and I've built this gain loop section which means I've now got the probes connecting, the EC probe connected into the circuit as well. And I just thought I'd show you what's going on with that. So in these three containers I've got three different salt solutions in this one I've got plain old tap water which is measuring in at an EC of 0.5 the next one up I've got a bit of table salt in there and we're measuring in an EC of 1.0 and the final solution it's got a bit more salt and we should measure in at 2.1 2.0 when I made it and um, I'll show you what happens with our circuit doing the same tests now so what we've got going on the screen, the yellow signal is the signal we're squirting in out of our oscillator, that's 1.5 kilohertz or 1.52 kilohertz. The blue signal is the signal we're picking up back from our EC probe after it's been multiplied by the gain stage. So I'm going to drop this into the EC 0.4 solution, 0.5, and I don't know if you can see there, you might be able to see, but we're getting a reading of 680 millivolts now on the signal that we're getting back. If I move that up to EC 1.0, we're up to 1.08 volts of signal we're reading back. And at EC of 2.1, we're reading oh, 2 volts or so of signal back. So you can see that as the salt solution gets stronger and stronger, going from the weakest next and the strongest one, the signal we're getting returned back from the EC probe gets stronger and stronger. So now I'm going to build the bit of the circuit to convert that back to a DC signal that I can read in with a microprocessor or with a multimeter. Okay, so I've finished assembling this circuit now and I've got all the waveforms looking about right on the screen of my oscilloscope and I've got the output of this circuit connected up to a multimeter. So I've just got the multimeter here set on the normal volts DC reading which is what this circuit's outputting and the voltage it's putting out is twice the EC reading. So as a for example in this plain tap water solution, slightly contaminated with salt now because I've been dipping the probes in, our blue lab truncheon is giving us a reading of 0.6 and my home built little DIY probe is giving us a reading of 1.2 which is an EC of 0.6. Um, in this tub over here, Blue Lab tells us we're getting a reading of 1.1 or thereabouts, and my probe gives us a reading of 2.2 volts. And in this third solution, 
Our blue lab gives us a reading of 2.0 volts and uh, 2.0 EC and I'm giving us a reading of well it'd be 2.1 on the EC. So I'm very happy with that because that gives me a nice 0 to 5 volt logic level, 0 to 5 volt range level which is very easy for me to tie into an analog, dig analog to digital converter on a microprocessor so that means I can very easily leave that probe permanently immersed in some solution and um, get the results back via Wi-Fi and or you know via the internet to my phone or something like that. So I guess some of you might wonder where this EC probe suddenly appeared from. Um, I bought this on eBay a few months ago. I've always been planning to actually put a microcontroller and monitor EC and um, I also bought myself a, the cheapest pH probe I could find. There's nothing inside this, it's just wires and some little uh, squares of some material, I don't know if that's platinum or nickel or something, I don't know if you can see it tucked in the end there inside that little glass loop. It's a couple of squares, but it's just wires, you could use phono plugs or anything. Um, I've got a pH probe as well that I've got to work out how to use. Um, I've got a bunch of these flow sensors so I can tell when pumps stop running. And I've got some little peristaltic dosing pumps for adding liquid nutrients automatically. Uh, oh, and I've got some temperature sensors as well. So I'm planning over the next few months, years, some time scale, depending on how long it takes and whether I get around to it, of um, putting some more of that stuff together and eventually getting it all connected up by Wi-Fi and getting it on the internet so I can uh, dose my plants remotely. Um, Anyway, a bit of a change from normal. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Um, well done for making it all the way to the end. See you next time. Cheers.